Good day. Good day. Alright, so I think that's enough four coder stuff for me now. Uh, there's one more thing I want to do today. I really want to start an experiment right now. I have this idea in my head. And I need to do some experimentation with C++. The rules themselves, because these I don't know wh what things exist and don't exist in this little nook and cranny. Um, well, it's just a nook. It's not a nook and a cranny simultaneously. Um, but anyway, this little issue uh, that I want to experiment with and see. I'm gonna. There's a, a thing I need to learn about. So we're gonna go to my practice folder and here comes the experiment thing so first of all first of all uh, with this parser that I've been working on I've always been trying to avoid something which is an easy thing to do would be to make the parser work something like this, right? You've got your, you know, you got your data and the length of your data, and uh, you've got some kind of like a uh, parse, um, uh, structure that you know you call this like the the, the parse or something, and you want to be able, like uh, yeah, something like that. And then it's like, here's my CBP parse. I want to fill this up with the results of data and length. It's never this simple because um, you always end up needing something like memory allocations. You need the ability to open up files that you see when you see an include. Um, there's just different things come up. And so there's two options there. I could just say like, oh, I'll just have the parse function do its own allocation. It'll call malloc. It'll open files itself. Um, but I don't want to be tied dead into those. Like, I want it to be flexible enough that you can swap in your your file loading scheme, your um, malloc scheme. And the reason that's super important is even in four coder, it would need to have those customized in different ways in different places. Um, so even just for four coder it needs to be true plus I want this parser to be a sort of general tool that I use for other things that I'm interested in working on so it needs to be have that flexibility so then the next thing is like oh maybe I've got callbacks right and that's the part that I've been avoiding parse callbacks callbacks right and you have some spot in your code where you do callbacks dot open file equals because of course then you also have to have user data here and user data is like actually not a user data but it's like it you're turning a pointer into like the parse context thing which you pass a pointer to right and open file is like the the parse open file for this purpose right it's a specialized version that you have to use here and the reason I don't like this approach is simply it's a gut feeling thing. I don't have a specific reason, but for some reason, all the code I ever write that deals with callbacks, it seems to be more error prone. And not necessarily the code I write that uses callbacks and things, but more if I have to use a library that has callbacks in it um, as its way of do solving this kind of problem, I always end up finding that that's like the most brittle point in the library. There's just it makes it hard for me to use for some reason when I have to think that way, uh, and therefore I wanted to avoid it. So the approach I developed, which worked just fine for the Lexer, was to do this. I would not have callbacks in parse context. The parse context would just be the stack frame here, and instead of C parse, you have C parse step. What you have is you have like a parse step result, and I call that like a step. And then what I do is I do a while loop, and I say okay, get a, vet, a step, and then you know if step dot is 
finished, then we can exit this loop. Uh, but there's other things like if step dot need memory, then you have like cpp provide memory, and you provide it to the parse context here, and you you know here's the new here's the new data here, and stuff like that, right? So this was the system I've been trying to make work. I like this better because it makes it like it it's basically the same as a callback like all this stuff here inside of this if right and inside of if step dot need file right these things are basically like callbacks as in the code in here is what I would have written in a callback it's just that I don't have to take deal with like making sure I pass this user data pointer and like my code can just be written where the variables are local variables here and it's accessible right here they can sort of interchange with each other more easily and uh, so on there's all sorts of reasons why I like this particular approach I also even like it because sometimes what I end up what I usually end up doing is I don't always have anything of any of these things happen sometimes it returns and it's not like well it returns so that you would do one of these things and then it continues it's like it returns all the time like it's returning lots of stuff and so then step these things here are like for maintaining the loop but I can also do like um, debug stuff by inspecting the state after each step happens here right and then you can also like terminate you can do like um, uh, you can do stuff like um, and we'll call that um, uh, do string right um, and it just affords you all kinds of flexibility. You can have it parse up to 10 tokens. You can have it go 100 steps, right? Whatever the thing is you want control over, you can do it. So then you can do 100 steps, process the results of that, then do another 100 steps, process results. You can like pipeline these things. All sorts of nice things happen um, if you set it up this way. But the problem has been that to get the parser written this way has proven very difficult because there's the reason this proves difficult is during the parse this will happen to me I'll be coming along and it'll be inside of a switch of a state right under some case and during that case I check if the state uh, if the context you know um, uh, previous is equal to this stuff here right and I get in there and under that circumstance I begin a big loop that does some stuff and every step in that stuff there's a chance like sometimes now I need memory right so we get to this sort of situation so what what I do to make this work how do I how does this happen how do I deal with this well what I've been doing what every attempt I've made at trying to make this thing work under these constraints has gone I get to here and now the fact that I need memory here means I didn't plan this out better well enough what I should have done was before the loop started maybe um, make sure always enough memory and then we never have this thing here right but then like that gets tricky to do because it's still inside this case inside this if and so like, what if I have to make sure that there's enough memory and make sure that you know um, there's you know uh, there because well normally there was like more than one array make sure uh, hash table isn't full and what if I accidentally hit this one and get it and then I hit this one and I get this one too so then what I have to do is like okay make sure if make sure always enough memory um, then go ahead and do the next part and then like if this happens so never do stuff right and you can see that now the code has to do this right and I hope that I've impressed upon you without going into excruciating like specifics but sort of giving the sort of pattern here is that it just gets hard to manage this when what the code I wanted to write was like this but the um, 
structure that I was trying to return to required that like I not have stuff this ne well deeply nested that has to return and then resume. And so I decided that since I was basically doing all kinds of work to uh, like sort of get that behavior when really like and I, and I knew the whole time that it was sort of like a soft simulation of a coroutine and I was like hacking around like oh that's going to go too deep so don't go around that but right here we'll say set the state here so I know how to resume to it I've just decided that I want something similar to a coroutine in C because what a coroutine would let me do is I could have this interface up here and I could be the deeply nested in some crap in here and then I could do yield I need some memory and that would cause this to return and I would blah 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 do some stuff and then go back and call this again and that would resume where I left off that's the functionality it would pick up right there so the code I write can just be natural and it'll resend its request via yields the problem is a proper coroutine implementation requires that you have multiple stacks and C doesn't really give you a good way to do that. You could do it through operating system stuff, but I don't want to base the parser. Like, I don't want the parser to only work in operating systems that happen to support this the right way. That have, where the op, the uh, there shouldn't be an OS layer to my parser is what I'm saying. So today's experiments are all about what is the closest approximation to a coroutine that I can get in C, and I have some ideas. Um, I think that it's going to be a little bit of a project, but I think it's going to be worth it because it's a tool I could use in a few other places too. And uh, we'll see what we learn along the way. But the first step that I have in mind is that I think it's going to look something like this. So let me write the the preferred. Let me start by showing you what I what the goal is. What a good coroutine system would look like. I would be able to do something like. Trying to think of a decent example. Okay. So something like um, B bool keep going equals one while keep going um, and then like a char C C equals um, get next character um, I'll put in a thing here called s we'll see why soon enough um, <laughs> Okay, and then I also want um, bool prev is white equals zero. If C equals space or new line or carriage return or tab, then if the previous is white, then skip equals true. Either way, prev is white now, else prev is white is false, right? And then we'll have this concept here of skip, and every step of the loop will say skip is false. And so what this code does is it's calling some function called get next character, and each step through it gets a character, it sees if it's white space, it sees if its previous thing was white space, and if both of this and the previous are white space, we're going to do something called skip. But if we do not skip, right, if we're at a situation where you do not skip, then, you know, output C, right? So output C means like maybe printf, um, da, da, one character and the best way I know how to put out one character to the terminal is like that right so print one character to the terminal as long as it's not a repeat if as long as it's not the, a sec, the second white space in a row 
So this is one thing. Now, what's this? Well, what this is, is this is my um, uh, get next character state s. And s has been initialized to zero to begin with. Um, or no, 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 I lied. This was created via a function called um, coroutine init. And the parameters to this are, you know, this file.txt. Right? Actually, I'll call it um, compressed stuff. Right? That's the name of the file. Dot comp. Compressed. Right? So, coroutine init takes this thing in and returns the state for this particular coroutine. This is the concept I have in mind here. I want a function that I can pass that to that each step of the way it looks like it's resuming what it did. Now, what is get next character? This is the kicker. This is why get this is a weird plan. Get next character is supposed to be written like this. I don't want to write something that takes in a state. I don't want to write the state. What I want to write is the coroutine init passes the parameters. So this string here matches up with this here. But you can see that the type system is going to going to get against me right here. This is not how types are supposed to work. So I'll explain kind of the first step towards this plan of mine. But this is the kind of code I want to be able to write. So file, and then it'll be like, you know, data data equals dump file file for um, Let's see, just to be fair, I'm going to do it this way. I do i equals zero, i is less than i is less than data size. Let me fix something real quick. There we go, plus plus i. Do decompression on data i with some sort of maybe uh, decomp state state which I initialized to zero and some sort of state passed in right there and what we'll do is we'll have a char c if and of course what I need here at the end is if c equals zero is output then keep going is false but right here um, do co decompression data um, uh, for loop if do decompression and then what I do is if c boom and then out here at the end I'll return zero and then here what I'll do is I'll yield um, yeah, if do, well, what I could do is just set this equal to this in here, and then if C does not equal zero, so the only time we'll put a zero is it will say the ter null terminator is the only zero, and every other character output is non-zero in this particular scheme, um, then what I want to be able to do is yield C, right? And yield means basically return C, but next time this coroutine is called I want it to I want it to uh, what's the word I'm looking for I want it to um, resume from there now obviously I need one little thing I can't just say coroutine if I'm gonna have more than one coroutine flying around I'll need to specify which one so it's like a get next character coroutine in it or maybe I'll just call that get next character init at that point. And then I have this resumable code, but I wrote the code so it's resumable in this way, right? So this is what I want to be able to write, but there's reasons why you can't do this. 
without like getting the operating system to help you with stacks and maybe using threads in a weird way or fibers or some other operating system thing. It's just not built into the language. So what we have to do instead is start seeing how well can I approximate this and I believe I believe I can get this what I've just described to roughly work eventually but it's going to take some time now the other thing I might do is I might call this resume like just call that the resume function instead of calling it even by the name of that uh, but the idea is that when you call resume here that's actually invoking this and it's either starting from the beginning if we've just initialized the state or it's um, starting from the middle of the yield right now how is that going to be possible let me show you the plan so for now I don't see any reason why any of that code doesn't work but um, I, what I will have to change is this function here greatly this function char star file blah 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 is actually going to go more like this there's a struct called get next character state and you can see in my my final plan I don't even have to write this struct right I write this function this struct is auto generated and I probably put like right here resumable just to mark that this is a resumable function okay get next character state that needs to contain all of this it needs to contain this and it needs to contain this Alright, this function is now being called resume since it's see so you can see how far away from the the code I wanted I actually have to get to have this happen. Um, all of this is now state pointer. Of course what we could do here so that we're not dereferencing a pointer everywhere is I could say that I copy this into the local scope, but you know it's something like this. I grab a copy of it. Um, everywhere that there's a local variable it now is in there do the compression see I feel like I would definitely not want to have all those dereferences I mean the compiler might be smart enough to just make them go away um, but we'll just do this for now Now there's another transformation I need to do, because this is still not actually anything useful. I need to turn this into this, and I need to turn this into this. Right. And what those actually do is going to be something like yield um, some amount of thing does something like. First, um, the other thing we need to do is at each yield we need um, a unique integer. Um, so there's PC, there's N. So first of all, state equals S. Before that, state underscore underscore PC underscore underscore equals PC. And then we need to return the n. And then finally, what we need is um, like a case on PC, right? It goes right there. 
and then I'll take all of that and wrap it in braces so that it can be treated as one object in the code, right? One computational enclosed thing. So the, the plan here is that this and this are being replaced by some integer, it's like zero, and now I have a case that I can skip to. What I don't know is whether or not that's actually something I can skip to. Like I, there, at least in the old days of C, when you have a switch, what you could do here was you could start the very top of your function would look like this. S dot, and of course this can't actually be zero because zero is like the initial PC. Um, but basically, I have to include here switch on um, s dot pc. Right here is case zero. That's where the program begins. So that's sort of like um, begin. Right, and that always does switch s pc case zero. So there's um, begin, then yield, the idea of yield is we're setting the PC to something, and then we are um, setting this, the pointer of the state, we're actually returning, and then we're having this case here so that next time we do this switch here, the PC will take us to this PC that we saved, right? So it'll skip us right past where we yielded. <clears throat> right after the return of the yield. And then, finally, something like return n is simply doing set the PC to something that indicates the end of the whole coroutine, copy out the state, and then return n without, you know, another case afterwards. <clears throat> right? So, that is, you know, obviously a lot of transformation, but I want to know if just this crazy switch thing even works. Because what this switch thing is doing is basically saying that the cases exist in sub-blocks inside of the switch statement. So there's a switch, and then these, there's these cases and they uh, they can't um, like they have to be able to be jumped to from through for loops and ifs and stuff and I'm not sure like, I know that it was in C at one point because that's what a Duff's device is but I'm wondering if this exists now you know so let's make a quick um, build file here prac 62 right so I do need to do a little bit more to uh, make this work decomp state will just be something like int position I'm not actually going to do any decompression. 67 data. That is usually, I usually use that to mean a data and its size. Data array and its size, I mean. Dump file. Uh, dump file returns data. dump file takes a file name and I'll just rely on good old fashioned C for that for now file equals F open file name read binary if you've got the file here's your data here's the result return the result if you've got your file uh, then this is where I've got to remember how these things work. Um, F seek to the file position zero seek end result dot size equals FT 
tell the file fseek file zero seek set go back to the beginning result.data equals malloc something of the size result.size fread into result data something the size of result size out of the file right there's the whole plan and we need one other thing which is if the result.size does not equal zero then do this so that's how we dump the file you need standard lib don't you Seventy-eight char star control G one oh nine Compression. One oh nine. Dot data. Do decompression is just going to be. Let me pop this up here. Do decompression on the decomp state state char x return the x ignore the state problem with main 125 uh, so the whole weird case thing looks like it might be compiling, which is good news. Local function definitions are illegal. Oh, I need to have like um an end. get next character init one three five yes and that's where you have this function here that actually does something like um, that matches the signature of the function you wrote um, get next character init file makes a state, clears it to zero, sets the file to that, and then returns that. Valbus void state, um, when you put void on something like that, it just means don't throw me some kind of warning or error over the fact that I didn't use this parameter. So I had to botch the original thing I wrote quite a bit to get to there. So this, all this had to be pulled out into a um, state struct. This had to be surrounded by a weird switch and I had to insert a one here that was sort of not information I had to insert beforehand. But the main remains exactly the way I want it, right? So I've got at least the ability, it might be a pain to write these coroutines, but using them is exactly what I want, if this works. The only thing left to do, so just very quickly, well, let me see my run, whoops, prac 
run misc run yep okay so I need to go to data compressed stuff dot comp and that's just gonna say hello world space 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 there should only be one space and one new line okay okay so if I go back to code or building let me see if this runs won't necessarily run all right let's debug it I'm curious to see what um, what goes on here Okay, great. Resume. What happens here? So we copy all of S into there. We begin. That means, okay, so that gets cleared to zero. We do dump file. Does this fail? Because it could totally fail. Yeah, we got a zero there. File name compressed stuff dot comp. Didn't work. Crack data compressed stuff dot comp. Curious. Oh, it did work. I'm an idiot. Okay. Size of 63. Okay. We malloc that. We read it. Okay, we've got the file contents successfully. So that's crazy, because getting the files is always the thing I mess up most easily. Then I begin a for loop where i is less than the size. I do this stuff which leads to decompressing an h into an h and that is not equal to zero so now I yield. Yield should mean the PC is going to become a one. The state will get copied back out then and then I'll return a s an h, right? So there we go. We returned. C is H. Skip is false. Preps white. Do not skip. Printf. Uh, am I an idiot? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So that is a proof of concept right there. So basically, that means this works. Like I can write code routine so long as I'm willing to do every single um, local variable in this way where I put it into a struct and I put an s dot in front of it. I may not be willing to do that. I can start for now doing that, but I that's just all the experimentation I want to do here. Because that basically proves the concept that I can yield and I can use this sort of Duff's device style jumping into weird random spots to get the effect that I want. But what I really would like to do is write, um, use my parser to make a sort of piler that would read things and see, oh, this is resumable, and turn resumable functions into something that has the struct generated automatically, the... Um, function generated automatically, the resume function that is for that particular state, the um, let's see, the init function for that state, right? So I would want to generate the init function for the state, the resume function for that state, and I would want to generate the struct itself just given this code. And it's not uh, that big of a deal, like the struct is everything in the parameters list is one part of the struct. Everything listed here. Of course, I'd have to declare all my variables up front like this. 
but I wouldn't have any problem with doing that because I pretty much do that anyway. So all my data variables declared here, variables here go into the struct and a PC goes into the struct and then basically this code anywhere it sees yield it replaces that with this macro basically and puts in its PC right so then I don't have to pick these ones and I don't have to write with these weird macros but yeah that was my plan so that's it that's everything I've got for today I don't know who's still with me after that crazy little adventure um, this was a longer stream than usual for because of that but um, I felt like it was a pretty interesting thing I've been uh, stewing over for a what, long time So before I sign off, I'll take a minute to see if anyone's got any uh, uh, comments or questions. If there's a better way to do C coroutines that are portable, I'd love to hear about it. And of course, I'll discuss for a minute the uh, the downside here. This isn't a full coroutine. Uh, a full coroutine, you have to set the whole stack aside um, because you know the idea is that you can call functions and then anywhere in your call f anywhere in the call stack of the coroutine you can yield and that yield doesn't yield back to the previously called function but to the previously calling coroutine this doesn't really do that all this does is makes a single function resumable i can't have like d do decompression here can't be the thing that yields out of my coroutine only this function can yield but i don't think i need anything fancier than this um this really has the ability to be a resumable function that's one stack in the frame or one frame in the whole stack therefore you don't need a separate stack because whenever the coroutine is running it'll just kind of borrow the stack and then that one frame it'll always clear that part it'll always clear the part of the stack that it's used before it yields so it's sort of like not it's obviously not really a coroutine but it gives me everything I need from coroutine so I think um, that that and and it's completely portable since it's all pure C. So that's my comment on it. Um, I don't see any other uh, people. I see um, the Blood Raven commented that he's he's at least with me here. But if there's no questions or comments about this, uh, feel free to you know use this technique yourself. Of course, I'm not sure if the the piler that I make will be open or not. I haven't thought about that. I might keep the piler for myself because this is pretty pretty cool I might sell it too for a dollar yes 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 so my plan is to write the parser using something like this so maybe if I make the parser open source, I guess I would have to. Well, if it's just going to be generated code, I can keep the generated code open and sh shit. I guess eventually the piler is going to have to be a part of the parser project. I'll have to think about that detail. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for j joining in. Uh, and I'm signing off now. Bye.